So while Adam was originally created in God's image, Satan stole that identity from him and ultimately stole it from us. So the fall changed everything. And as a result of the fall in Eden, we are born in Adam's spiritual image, spiritually dead, not God's image. Does everybody see that now? So it's only when we receive new life in our spirits that we are recreated and renewed again in God's image. So the day you got born again, life came back in, and you're no longer spiritually dead because you got born again, and the Holy Ghost joined His Spirit with your spirit, and now we're recreated, and now we're renewed, and now we are in God's image. We regain the spiritual identity that God intended for us to have. Look at Colossians 3, 9, and 10 in the NLT. Colossians 3, 9, and 10 in the NLT. So the day you got born again, life came, restored you from spiritual death. You regained that identity that God intended for us to have. And then in Colossians 9 and 10, he says, Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Oh, my goodness. So because of our death with Jesus, we're now reborn. We're plugged into the life of God. We've been recreated in the image of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to show you this scripture now. 1 John chapter 4, 17. I'm going to show you the scripture, and I don't want you to read it lightly. Uh, I, I want you to take it in light of what we're talking about here. 1 John chapter 4, 17 says, And as, as we live in God, as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him, Lord have mercy. We can face him how? Because we live like Jesus here in this world. We can be confident because we live like him in this world because we like him. Now look at this in the King James, 1 John 4, 17. You got to have confidence in this. You got to have confidence in this. And that's the thing that's going to be on the attack. Your, uh, your confidence about your identity is going to be on the attack. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, as he is, all right, now, uh, let, me, let me amplify it some. As he is the Son of God, so are we the sons and daughters of God in this world. Yeah, y'all don't, don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all hear what I'm saying. Let, let, me, let me show you something. Let me show you. Go to 1 John 3, 1 John 3, 20 through 21 in the NLT. This, let's well, start with the King James first and then the NLT. You got to have confidence in this. You got you to have confidence in this. The, 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 uh, the, the King James says, For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knoweth all things. 21. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. Now, look at this in the NLT. Look at this in the NLT. Even if we feel guilty, how many of you ever felt guilty about something before? You ain't got to raise your hands. That's everybody in the room. <laughs> Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. <laughs> Say that with me. God is greater than my feelings. And he knows everything. Okay. He says, now, dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, 
then we can come to God with bold confidence. Now think about this. If he's going to get you, if he's going to rob you of your identity, somehow he's going to use guilt to try to get you not to have confidence in who he said you are. So you got to watch out for the guilt. When the guilt shows up, you got to realize God's greater than your guilt. When the shame shows up, shame is, 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 is less about what you've done and more about trying to convince you who you are, feeling shameful. Condemnation. Those are feelings. And he says God's greater than those feelings. But Satan will all, has always tried to use feelings to get you to doubt your identity. And if you feel like a bad man, then you identify as a bad man. If you feel uh, just any kind of way that's outside of the Word of God, then that's, Satan will try to say that's who you are. You are as you feel. You, you are as you behave is what Satan will do. You behave bad, you bad. And what God is trying to say is what you do and how you feel did not determine your identity. I determined your identity. Ah, We're going we to keep rolling. You're going to get this. A new creation, as new creations, we are already like Christ in our human spirits. As new creations, we're already like Christ in our human spirits. Everybody that's born again, you're already like Christ in your spirit. We are called to live out this new identity as our minds get renewed to the truth of this grace of God of who we really are. We get, we get our, our mind, minds renewed to who we really are, who we really are at the very core. Now listen, there is no cleaning up of the old. It can only be replaced. It can only be replaced. This is exactly what happens to us at salvation. The old goes away and the new arrives. Look, look at the second, second Corinthians 5.17 says it like this. 2 Corinthians 5.17. See, there are a lot of people trying to clean up the old. No, you can't clean up the old. You got to get rid of the old. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, say out loud, I'm in Christ. I'm born again in Christ. So I'm a new creature. He says he is a new creature. He said, old things have passed away. They moved, and they've been replaced. Behold, all things are become new. So God didn't try to clean you up. He replaced with the old, with the new. We are reborn in God's image. Now, because we are now in Christ, we are now in Christ. The day you got born again, you are now in Christ. Don't look at your behavior. Don't look at what you did. We'll get to that. You are now in Christ. You are born again now in Christ. We are in a safe place. I'm in Christ. I'm in a safe place. There's just certain things that can't happen to me, like me missing heaven. I'm in a safe place. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. In order to fix this thing, he had to change. He had to hit. He had, to, he had to put me in the right location. I'm in a safe place. We are hidden with Christ in God. Hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3.3 3 in the NLT, look at that. Look at that. I normally pass these scriptures by, but when you're fighting religion and folks saying stuff and they don't, it ain't even the Bible, and then you don't, you don't heard it all your life, and now you, 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 you look at it as the truth. He says, for you died to this life. Your real life is hidden with Christ in God. You died to this life. Your real life is hidden in Christ. So we tossed around phrases like, being out of fellowship. You ever heard that before? He out of fellowship. <laughs> Phrases like, well, we trying to get close to God. 
all the while God's Spirit is bearing witness if we would only listen that we are one spirit with him. Ain't no out of fellowship. You one spirit with him. <sighs> Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 17, NLT. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 17, NLT. He says, but the person who is joined to the Lord, how many of you are joined to the Lord? You got born again, you're joined to the Lord, right? He is one spirit with him. I am one spirit with him. Oh, my goodness. And that, you, not, you have to have confidence in that. I'm one spirit with him. All right, now watch this now. We're hidden safely in him. We're hidden safely with him according to what I just showed you. We're hidden safely in him. We are right next to Jesus. We are in the safest of all spiritual locations in God being hugged tight by the king himself right now. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30 in the NLT. I like to hammer things home, scripture after scripture after scripture, and then show you the same scripture all over again before I hit my point. He says in verse 30, God has united you with Christ Jesus. How many of you believe that? For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy. He freed us from sin. Have you noticed something here? Everything I read here, he did. God has united you with Christ, not me. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. I said Christ made you right with God, and you still trying to get right with God. <laughs> you working hard to try to get right with God. Some of you came to church this morning to get right with God. <laughs> and Christ made us. You couldn't get right with God. You've been trying to get right. How many of y'all remember trying to get right with God? Before you even got, you weren't even saying trying to get right with God. I ain't going to smoke as much as I used to. I ain't going to drink as much. And, you, and every time you said that, you did it more. You did it more. I ain't going to cuss as much as I used to. You did it more. Christ had to make you. You a made man. You didn't, you didn't do this on your own. He had to make you right with God. So I am the righteousness of God. I've been made right. And then he said, and he made us pure. Check this out. And he made us holy. I'm holy. I don't care what you say. And I don't care what you saw. And I don't care what you heard. It's too late now. I'm born again. It's too late now. I'm already in Christ. I'm in the safest location I can ever be. I am righteous. I am pure. I am holy. Whether you think so or not, whether my behavior represents it or not, first base, that is my identity. I am holy. And watch this. And I'm free from sin. And he is able to keep me from falling. Temptation can come, but he's able to keep me from falling. Oh my God, you want me to say that? Ooh, are they ready? But even if I fall, I'm still holy. I'm still his son. I'm still his child. And he'll pick me up wherever I fell, and we'll keep working at it. But I am no less a child of God when I fell than I am 
him when he picked me up? And because I know who I am, I'm going to want to get up. I tell myself, wait a minute, boy, what you doing? You're a child of God. You wrapped up, tied up, tangled in Jesus. You'll be a fell down, and then you're like, that don't feel right. I don't like the way this feels. I know I used to like it, but it don't feel good no more. It's just a mess. I'm just wasting my time. I realize I'm not supposed to be here no more. There's something that's going on on the inside of me. You can't be wrapped up in Jesus and come out the same as you were before. I'm a child of God. I don't like that no more. I used to love cussing you out, but it don't feel right no more. Some so you still what we'll say, something wrong with me. Now something right with you. I used to love going to bed with Tom and Jack and Jim. Just don't feel right no more. I don't know what's going on, but I know what's going on. You're being transformed. Hallelujah. You can't spend time with the Savior and come out doing the same thing. Hallelujah. But don't you ever let go of your identity. You are still Jesus, kids. Hallelujah. This, this is going to probably go viral. Y'all heard what Creflo said? Creflo said, there they go again. Don't get mad at me because I know how to read. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> We're quick to say I'm redeemed. We'll say that real quick. I'm redeemed. But we're slow to agree that we're also righteous. What's that? Oh, yes, Brother Dollar, I'm redeemed. Are you holy? Oh, well, well, you know, God's holy. <laughs> yeah, but ain't you in him? If you, if you believe it. Because he said he made you holy, too. He said he made you pure. My goodness. Oh, oh, yeah, I know what you're saying, Brother Dollar. In Christ, ha, 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 in Christ. As if that's some sort of distant, far-off righteousness that is useless for us now. But how righteous are you if Christ has become your righteousness? And how holy are you if Christ has become your holiness? These are qualities that we possess because Jesus has become our life. Colossians 3, 4, flip over there. I'm almost finished with the introduction, then we'll start. <laughs> Ain't lying. You know, all this had to be said so we can get on the right page. And there's still some people in here like, I don't know about that. And I'm reading straight from the Bible. You just don't want to know about it. I don't know about that, brother. I, I, I get what you said here, but I don't know about the rest of that. Oh, the rest of that, what I just read? <laughs> he said, and when Christ, who is your life, and when Christ, who is your life, when Christ is your life, Christ is your life, and when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world. So once we realize our, our cru crucifixion and, and burial and resurrection with Jesus Christ, once we realize that, we can see that God announces us as righteous and that God announces us as holy because he is describing our nature. 
He does more than put a righteous label on us. He does more than merely adopt us into the family. In our human spirits, he has made us like him. We are righteous. We are holy. God sees us this way because we are this way. We don't get a final polish right before we go to heaven. We get a new body when we escape this world, but not a new human spirit or soul. Why not? Because our inner man is heaven ready. Our inner man is heaven ready right here and right now. In our human spirit, we are already seated in heaven. What? Ephesians 2, 6. Ephesians 2, 6. This is just stuff you got to make up your mind to believe and have confidence in. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, and he seated us with him in the heavenly realm because we are united with Christ Jesus.